Hello, you're back with a single malt review, and today's dram takes us once more into the Highlands and back to Ben Nevis Distillery, who yeah. we've visited in the past. This one, this one is something really special. Mm. Um, I discovered this when I was looking to looking to ultimately not spend a lot of money, um, and I found it sort of rolling out from mm. the blend mortuary cupboard at our uh, at our whiskey local. But I couldn't have been more surprised and more. Happy. What it is is the from Ben Nevis, the McDonald's Glen Co. That's going to blown up in the light there, but never mind. Um, McDonald's Glen Co. Blended Malt Scotch Whiskey. So it's all malt whiskey. Hmm. Um, the blended malt would suggest it comes from more than one distillery, but that is a bit of a mystery to me because <laughs> how this is not just a big old cask strength eight year old. Ben Nevis, I have no idea. Mm. It is such an odd whiskey, but it's a really, really, really good one, mm -hmm. um, as we will, as we will see. Um, it's unchill filtered, natural colour, so um, you you can kind of see there. It's already mm. looking kind of opaque. Uh, a bit of haze going on, even in our warm weather. So, and that's at the full fifty eight percent. So definitely unchill filtered, uncoloured, and uh, eight years old. Mm. So it's. Not often you'll see an eight-year-old age statement. That's a pretty yeah. ballsy thing to do. Most people would um, uh, bail and make it no age statement uh, if they were dealing with eight-year-old whiskey. Mm. So it's good to see it. Good to see it on there because eight-year-old, you know, not nothing. I'd rather see an eight-year-old on the bottle than I would, um, you know, put an eight-year-old. I'll assume your whiskey's eight years old. Put nothing on the bottle. I'll <laughs> assume it's between six and eight years old because that's how my suspicious mind works with uh, no age statement whiskies. So. Um, McDonald's of Glen Co. Um, there's various Scottish history associated with mm. that particular thing, battles and whatnot. I'm not really up on that one, but the bottle is named after the uh, founder of Ben Nevis, Mr. Long John McDonald, um, presumably a tall gentleman, and uh, has been has been named so ever since. And I think they've made this for ages. I think they've mm. made this way back until the early 80s. So um, they've been making this longer than we've been around. Uh, so it's a pretty stoic old blend mm. there. But enough of the history of it. Let's have a wee look at yeah. what um, I can only describe as an absolutely belting whiskey. Oh. Despite being full 58% ABV, there is not a lot of heat on the nose. There's a little bit of uh, resin, just the faintest hint of, say, like modelling glue, just a little bit of that like, acrid sharpness. Yeah, there, there's a wee bit of uh, acetone character mm. there, which is unsurprising given that it's full 58%. What I'm getting mainly though is honey and blossoms. Yeah. This is some really delicate florals. What I, when, how, how familiar are you with Ben Nevis oh, whiskey? I had the ones we tried on the channel yeah. before. Yeah, it's, it's Ben Nevis uh, is one of the sort of the, the whiskey I can mm. practically count down on my one hand oh. um, that you could actually blind taste and get right. reliably because it's one of those whiskies that really does do its own thing. Mm. It's got this sulfur, I guess is the main oh. thing. It's a very typically, though they, they use plenty of bourbon, mm. the style is to be sherry matured and it's a really sort of rough and ready, slightly dirty sherry matured. They've always been a bit of an industrial tasting whiskey. Oh, yeah, because it's slightly similar to Edredura in that respect of rather A little bit, yeah, yeah. There's a real casks. sort of matchstick note. Mm. Ben Nevis even more so yeah. um, with this one. There's always... They taste mm. of the sort of really sherry, sulfury match that can note, and the other one is almost like a coppery, metallic quality mm. that comes through in the whiskey, that sort of more industrial element to it. That's a bit harder to describe, but if you've if you smelled hot copper, mm. um, so if you've been near a whiskey still, um, that it has a it has kind of a smell to it, which mm. has always reminded me of Ben Nevis. Um, Fifty eight percent, pretty strong. Yeah. So we'll, we'll approach this carefully. Ooh. Not unapproachable. Mm, is, um, yeah. You wouldn't want to take a huge sip, but oh. but we've tasted punchier things at lower yeah. strength, I think. It's kind of a slow release. It seems at first very smooth and cool, but it mm. kind of blossoms into a bit of a conflagration toward the end. Yeah, it does. It's mm. got... Um, it's, it is a young whiskey. It's got mm. lots of youthful spirit on it, but it has plenty of wood going on. Yeah. And yeah, lots and lots of Highland character. Hmm. Lots and lots of sort of floral, um, you know, heather flower, heather honey, all kinds of, you know, good stuff that you hmm. like to taste in your Highland whiskies. I will, um, I will water mine. Yeah, lots just a of uh, floral notes, lots of honey, and a little bit of sort of sweetish uh, nut flavours too, toasted almonds, that sort of a thing. 
at the a water, quite a heavy backbone of uh, the vulcanized rubber. Yeah, the water is really going to bring that out. Mm. Um, there's huge. It's a real tire fire going on <laughs> now with that addition of water. There's oh, yes. huge amounts of sulfur, rubber, metal going on in there. On the nose, it actually smells of a, a bicycle puncture repair kit. Yeah. If you want to get oddly specific, possibly a bit too specific for to, for practical purposes, but that's what it's reminding me of. Yeah. A, a lot of people say that the Sherry character in Ben Nevis is too ruddy, mm. like it's too weird and too sulfury, and there's been say there's been batches that have come mm. out where I've tended to agree but I think it's gone on so long now that it's part of the it's part of the character of mm. Ben Nevis I wouldn't it wouldn't, wouldn't be so familiar to me if I came upon a Ben Nevis that was I don't know that I could describe as too clean mm. um, that wouldn't be what I was after necessarily as well I kind of like it because mm. it's a wee bit dirty just like Isla Whiskers mm-hmm. the water for me has brought out a little hint of brandy in the flavour profile but a much bigger hint of say Tinned pears, again with the unusual degree of specificity in what I'm tasting. But yeah. imagine the way pears, when they're tinned in syrup, they go you know, sweet and juicy, but also just slightly well. They stop weighty and to me, and yeah, to me, to me, they stop tasting of pears entirely. Yeah. Tinned fruit, um, we we get a lot of fresh fruit. I think mm. we're quite lucky down here in New Zealand. Make most um, of our own. So yeah. we don't we don't eat a lot of tinned fruit. So to me, it's always weird weird flavour when mm. I encounter tinned things. Pears especially. Pears yeah. have such a subtle flavour. You're almost tasting. Like the, the tin is just as much mm. of a tasting note um, as it is the the pears, and that's yeah that that comes through as this metal quality mm. for me, almost like a you know tin spoon kind of a mm. um, effect if you're prone to chomping on tin spoon. <laughs> and you're getting that from this absolutely With the addition yeah. of that water yeah. Mm. If anything, I said it was a little better before adding the water. Yeah, it was definitely more. Conventional. It was water. yeah sweeter and and more um, all encompassing. Yeah, though the main thing is I mean this this tastes of this and that you know it's, mm. it's again the tastes of uh, well if you ask me one hundred percent Ben Nevis mm. I nor apparently anybody else knows what the what must be microscopic amount of alien whiskey from another distillery that's gone into here the thing that makes it a mm. blended malt as opposed to a single malt um i have no idea uh, if anyone does have any yes, no, but, but yeah, not only then, whatever yeah. whiskey is in it but also for rationale for it when they could probably produce just their be own and call it a single malt a um, strength eight-year-old single malt which would be a tick off boxes for today's yeah. market i have no idea there may mm. be a traditional element to it i yeah. don't know like i say this has been made for a very very long time mm. but um mm. what this has is just Heaps and heaps and heaps of character. It's got lots yeah. and lots of strength. It's got lots and lots of color. It's got lots and lots of flavors. Uh, for such an incredibly unassuming mm. price tag and a, a label that arguably is not going to win any packaging awards, <laughs> they couldn't even stick it on properly. This looks like a label I've tried to put on the bottle. It's got a huge <laughs> wrinkles in it. Uh, it's really, really looks like some homemade business. Uh, but yeah, the whiskey in there is just super duper. I don't know, honest. Mm. Um, it's like. It's in so many ways a whiskey that probably represents what whiskey would have been like a very long time ago. You know, back in the back in the fifties, even maybe earlier, whiskey would have been younger. It would have mm. been more sherry matured, and it would have been, in this case, stronger. You know, if it was cast kind of strength, that that doesn't really change. Um, I I think this is a real I don't know blast from the past. Mm. I think you could say, and that that's really interesting. It's I also think. very versatile. We get a lot of different whiskies in one here because of the amount of change that happens when you add just a little water to it. Um, some of the yeah, the standout points of each sort of flavor profile are completely different from one state to the next. A little bit of water makes a lot of difference in what you're trying, which is going to appeal to, I think, more people. Yeah. As for scores, mm. it's not... I don't want to imply that it's a sort of a fine whiskey mm-hmm. here. It's not super-duper top-shelf stuff. It's more about how much rather than mm. um, what it does. It is just... It's a whiskey that comes in and makes an awful lot of noise um, and has, has huge amounts of more... Lots and lots of more mm. going on, and uh, it's not going to get a low score. It's an eighty-four for mm. me, and that's imagine that's that's a whole truckload of eighty-four as well. Um, mm. Whereas a whereas a very very delicate whiskey, I might score it. Goodness, I might score it ninety-four or something. Mm. That's that's a little delicate glass full of ninety-four. This is the dump truck turning up outside your house and dumping a huge amount of eighty-four onto your driveway. Mm. Um, is what this is. It's the only way I can describe it. Yeah, um, you've conceivably got a better analogy. But... Uh, it, uh, what do you think? Uh, uh, you're absolutely right. This delivers in abundance. It's a. It comes across fairly unassuming. Right? It's a relatively young age. It's not a single malt, but, and it's also a relatively bargain price. But 
for that price, you get, as you say, a whole lot of whiskey. Mm. There are a lot of very strong flavors here. Not all of them will tick every flavor box. Heck, it's not my favorite. But I rated an 85 because of how yeah. you know, defined, a, how strong, how unique and standalone it is. It's a, it's a good, honest, and like mm. I say, absolutely belting yeah. whiskey. Uh, seek it out if mm. you're remotely curious. It's an excellent yeah. showcase of Ben Nevis doing their thing. Yeah, it will not set you back. A little bit of, bit of mystery too because, of, well... What else is it? We don't know. Mm, yeah, if mm. you do, please let us know. Even <laughs> if you have a suggestion or a, um, speculation, mm. I have absolutely nothing to go on. Yeah. Terms Even of taste, the internet doesn't know and doesn't let on. Terms of taste, this is 100% um, mm. uh, Ben Nevis, were you to ask me, but who knows? Who knows? Anyway, I think it might be bourbon time next, so mm. we will um, get back into gear with that one. Sanjay, we will see you soon.